Guten Morgen, everyone. Today we are baking baguettes. Right now, I have the oven preheated at 480 degrees Fahrenheit, and here are the baguettes ready to be baked. So, what do I have to do first? Score them with my lamb. Take a look at my new lamb. Ooh, there. Really sharp. Whoa, whoa. So, now I'm going to score them all along like this. They're ready, proofed, ready to be baked. Okay, here we go. We need to do it at 45 degrees. This is an angle. You shouldn't do a deep cut just on the surface of the baguette. Okay, follow me. Here we go. Wow. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Why seven, not eight? I don't know. <laughs> okay, let me check if the scoring is okay. I have to adjust here, and then. Okay, here it's okay. Put on, I think if I can. Okay, good. Time to go to the oven. Follow me. There we go with that. Four, first, left or right, left or right, left or right, right. Okay, there. Here they go, and now I come with the other ones. Bye. Good. And now, some artisan steam. Always when you bake baguette for this kind of French bread, you need to add some steam or vapor inside the oven so we can get a good oven spring. I hope so. If the gluten is is with us. So now, time. Around 25, 30 minutes. I put 25 minutes and then we check what is going on. Okay. Now we're going to start with the dough from the beginning. So follow me. Let's go. Yes, you need to move first. Come with me. I'll show you the way. Okay. Welcome to my baking other part of the lab. Here I have three preferments. No, I don't have three preferments. I am about to make these three preferments. So this dough has three preferments, as I said, from uh, to start with. But here I also have my sourdough starter because one is going to be done with sourdough starter and the other ones, one with a little bit of yeast. So maybe you know when you make bread, you can use yeast, you can use sourdough you, or you can use a preferment. What is a preferment? As the word says, it's something that it's fermented previously. It's a dough which we will uh, ferment the day before we start uh, baking. So what, would, what we're going to do is a punish. We're going to do a sourdough starter. And this is in French, it's called pâte fermentée, which is just like a dough uh, a bread dough, but from the day before, when you make a whole batch of bunch of a batch of um, of bread, you keep a little piece of that dough and use it to to proof the next bunch, uh, the next batch of of bread. But in this case, we are going to use three different preferments in the same dough. Yes, that's something new, and it's going to make the dough, dough the bread, or in, in this case, the baguette, really, really light and really, really crispy and very airy. I hope so. So let's start with the preferments. This one, I'm going to start with this one, which is the old dough or the previous dough. And I'm going to mix it here on the mixer. <laughs> and the ingredients that we have are, of course, flour, bread flour, a little bit of salt, water, this small amount of yeast, I'm using fresh yeast now, and then some olive oil okay so in the mixer we add the flour there it goes now the yeast whoop the salt and i still have the water and the oil the olive oil i'm going to add it at the end so now i start it and slowly start adding the water Why I'm using the paddle instead of the hook? Good question. Mm, did you ask me? <laughs> so I am using the paddle because 
This dough is a high hydration dough. It has a lot of water. So what I think is bet better for mixing is a paddle instead of using the hook. When I work out with a high hydration dough, I prefer using the paddle rather than the hook. It's much better. So, okay, start mixing. And I still have the olive oil. You need to go adding really, really slowly the water in the dough. This is called bassinage. So you don't have to add the water all, all at once at the beginning. Just little amounts and check how the dough is developing. Okay, so as soon as the dough starts development, developing, I will add the olive oil. Good. There it goes, okay. And leave it there, and we'll start with the other mixes. Those. Let me leave this here. And now we'll start with the polish. Maybe the polish, you already know it. It's a very well-known preferment for baguette. And how do you make the this preferment? The, the formula is one part flour, one part water, and just a little bit of uh, yeast. In this case, I am using fresh yeast, but if you're going to use uh, dry yeast, use one third of the weight of the fresh yeast. So here I have the flour, and now I'll add the yeast, and now comes the water. All the water. And we'll start mixing this. This is really, really easy. You don't have to do anything else. It's just mixing these both ingredients. Really easy. And this is going to give a lot of flavor to the dough. That's the best part of using preferments in dough rather than using just yeast or maybe sourdough in, at the beginning. If you make preferments, you're going to make the dough of the bread even more tastier, lighter and super airy with, I hope so, big pockets, big holes in the in the crumb. So that's the idea of using preferments. Good. Let me check if, if everything is well mixed. Good. So it's done. Uh, this is a texture. Now we need, we need to allow the dough to grow, to ferment. It's going to take quite long, a few hours, maybe eight hours or even more. It depends the amount of yeast and the temperature that you are. Right now I am at, uh, what? At 70 degrees, I hope. 25 degrees centigrade, that, let me check. Temperature, if you, were, if you use Fahrenheit, let me see, to Fahrenheit, that's around 77 degrees Fahrenheit, the, the room temperature right now. That's the perfect room temperature for the, um, the um, preferments to proof. So here is the polish, we're done. Now we'll start doing a refreshment to the sourdough. Of course I have already here my sourdough starter, which is super active, full of air. As you can see. And now I'm going to make a new refreshment. I'm going to use a little bit of this one. I'll put just this small amount. Take a look, it's nothing. Just a little bit. But here is all the power. And I put here with that amount of flour, which is one part flour, one part water, the same as I did with the Polish, only that this time I'm not using yeast, I'm using, using sourdough starter. So now I add the water and start mixing again. Here we go. Slowly. And this is going to take also a long time to ferment but this is also going to give a lot of flavor to the dough good let me check nothing's 
and still some dry flour at the bottom. Okay, I think we're done. Good. There we go. Here's the sourdough. And now I'm gonna take this here. And let's check the dough. How's it going? Good. This is a very small amount of dough. So now I am going to add the oil. Really slowly. Good. All the greens are in. Just a few seconds. And you will have it. It's a very hydrated dough, with I told you. Interesting. What is going on in the oven? We'll check that in a few minutes if we have some oven spring or not. The thing about the, the, the steam that I use, this artisan steam in the oven, it's because we need to make the environment inside the oven uh, to be moist. Because if it's dry, the surface of the baguettes or the bread will dry instantly and then we won't have uh, oven spring. So that's why we add vapor or, or steam at the beginning. That should be at the, the, the first part of the baking. So the first 10, 15 minutes. So we're going, we're going to check that in a few seconds. Okay, it's going good. A few seconds more and we're done. This dough will ferment also for a lot of hours, so perfect. In case you already have dough that you use from, maybe you're in a baker and you bake bread every day, you could use one part of that uh, old dough, uh, which is in French, is called pat fermenté, for your bread. But in this case, I'm making this dough previously. Good. We are almost done. Meanwhile, while we wait, I want you to take a look again at my sourdough, which I always tell you it should be always really, really active. I want you to look at the texture, how creamy and airy it is. It's like a, like a mousse. This is the kind of texture that a sourdough starter should always have. Something really important in the sourdough that it shouldn't be that acid because if it's too acid the acid it's not going to be uh, helpful with the gluten development because it won't let the gluten to develop that's why so you need to keep it low in acidity and how you keep it low in acidity well the best thing is to use it if you use it regularly every day and you refresh it every day you'll make the acidity low uh, lower in case you don't use it that much then what you have to do, maybe it's discard, or as I'm doing right now, just picking a little bit of this sourdough and making a new one. This way you are going to make a sourdough starter really, really low in acidity. Um, if you have a pH meter, maybe you have a pH meter, the acidity that you should be looking for is around 4.5. It should be between 4 and 5. In the middle, 4.5 should be the acidity, the best acidity of a sourdough. But to achieve that, what you have to do is use it. Well, otherwise, take a little bit of this one, make a new one. Or what, what I always recommend too is to discard. You may maybe can discard half of your sourdough and then refresh it with a little bit of flour, more flour, less water, not to, not to hydrate it. Mix it, try to look for a creamy texture. And that's, the, that's my method done by the eye, not waiting, just Mixing and looking for this kind of texture, really um, creamy. Okay, so we have this done. Let me clean this, just a second. And we have the three pre-ferments ready. Good. I think we're done, let me check this. It's a little dough. Okay, I think we're done. Wow. <laughs> Good. That. So this is going to be our mini dough. Good. There. 
take a look at this one. <laughs> yeah. Now we'll make some little Bertinet method like this. <laughs> a few stretching and foldings. There it goes. It's really, really sticky. I know, but it's going to be much better with the time. Time will need for us. As you know, maybe you've heard about the autolyze, which is autolyze. Autolyze is just letting the dough to knead by itself. You only need time. When you mix flour and water, <laughs> you start with the dough, and then the water moves around all the dough slowly and hydrating all the proteins that makes the gluten network. So if you give them time, you'll get a kneaded dough by itself. You just need time. And today we have a lot of time because we are making these preferments ahead of time, one day before. So there we go. Perfect. And then you open this. Yo, oh, the name, I don't want to make a mess. Well, so there we go with the dough and put it in there. Good. So now we have the three preferments ready. Here one, two, everything's very sticky. <laughs> Let me put this here and wash my hands one second while you watch the preferments there. The Polish, the sourdough starter and the um, pat fabente in French. Perfect. So here we are. This is a polish. We need this to grow to give it some time. Here we have the sourdough starter just refreshed. And this is the pâte uh, fermentée. The sourdough, this refreshed one, is also known as levain, which is in French. Or levain, yes, it's levain in French. Because <laughs> all the baker is mostly French. And here is the sourdough, which started this. So we have in for preferment. The sourdough, of course, is also a preferment, an artisan preferment. And these two were done with yeast. And this levain is sourdough. Okay, so we have the three preferments done. And now what we should do is wait a few hours. What I recommend is to let them rise to double or triple in size at room temperature. As I said, around 70, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 25 degrees uh, Celsius. And then when they're done, if you don't want to start mixing the final dough, then what you should do is to put them in the fridge. Let them sit in the fridge to cold ferment for from overnight. So at the next day, you mix uh, the final dough, which is what we're going to do now. So I let these three preferments to wait, I don't know, here. The sourdough, I let it here because it's my favorite. And now we'll start with the, with the dough. But first of all, I want to show you how are these preferments? How do they look like at the next day? Yes, I know, these ones are bigger. Yes, and it's the same dough, only that I have more dough because we're going to mix now with this mixer, not with the small one, with the big one. So that's what we're going to do. And put this one there. Whoa. And here are the three mixers. So let what work. Which one do you want to see first? Polish? Okay, let's go with the Polish. And take a look at the Polish. It has fermented like eight hours at room temperature and then I put them in the fridge till today. A lot of bubbles. You should smell this. It smells incredible. Polish is the first preferment that you use or which was which was used for um baguette. It's not called Polish. The right name is Polish because it comes from Poland. Yes. The Polans were the inventors of the Polish, but the French people were the ones that used it for the baguette. So it's interesting. So this one is the first and the preferred preferment that you use for baguette. And But today we are using three different. Here is the levain or the sourdough starter already fermented. Take a look at all these bubbles that we have here. Wow. This was also cold fermenting in the fridge after eight hours at room temperature. And here is the pat fermenté or this old dough, the dough from, from uh, an old bread. Take a look at these bubbles. All these bubbles will make 
the bread or the baguette really, really airy and um, really tasty. First of all, what we're looking for is to have a really tasty bread. Crispy, thin, with a uh, thin uh, crust, with an um, airy and creamy uh, crumb, and super tasty. That's, that's a bit the main target that we're looking for. So, here we have the three preferments. With this, the, with this three uh, preferments, we're going to make the final dough. For the final dough, I need for a few more ingredients that I have here. I need flour, I need more flour, then you need a little bit of sugar, yes, a little bit of sugar, which is food for the yeast. We're going to add a little bit more of yeast, some salt, of course, olive oil, a lot of olive oil, and water. Why are we using olive oil? In the recipe, the olive oil is going to make the dough a little bit more extensible, extensible and it's because it gets in between the, the gluten network. They don't let these two uh, proteins that makes the, the, the gluten network, the oil uh, um, stands in the middle. So it makes the, the gluten network a little more extensible. So that's what we're looking for in a baguette because we want to make it really um, easy to be stretched. So, and also the olive oil is going to give more taste, of course and it's going to help the conservation of the bread. When you use oil in the doughs, you make the, it's like a conservant. Also the sourdough is a, is a natural conservant. So this bread is going to last longer. Of course, there are two times, um, well, two, two stages of the bread for me. The first one, when the bread or the baguette in this case is freshly baked, is perfect. And then at the next day, it's going to be a good bread, but for toast. But this, this bread could last, I don't know, at room temperature, well kept around four or five days, if you don't eat it first, okay, no? So, well, we have the three preferments, but I think we should check what's going on in the oven, right? So I'll follow you. Let's see what's going on. I don't want to see. Oh, dun, 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 dun. Wow, let's check this. Oh, four minutes left. Wow, yes. We have a good oven spring. Excellent. What I should do now is to let me put on my gloves. Whoa, here. I'm going to turn them around. Since this is this oven is a deck oven and has no and has no uh, fan inside, sometimes I like to do this so we get better. Okay. Wow. And it's looking gorgeous. <laughs> we had an excellent oven spring. Left. Okay. Great. S three minutes left, four minutes left. I don't know. What do you think? Should we give them some more time or shall we wait four minutes? Okay, we'll come back in four minutes. You go first. Dun, dun. I leave my gloves there. <laughs> we go to the mixer, to the big mixer now. So, yes. This is a big mixer. This mixer can knit around 80 kilos, Seven, 70 kilos. Yes, 70, <laughs> 15 kilos. But we're going to just to mix three kilos now. So what do we do first? We're going to put here all the preferments. Take a look at these bubbles. And look, wow, Ooh. the smell is incredible. I hope you could smell this. Wow, it, this is incredible. And all this is going into the bread. Wow. Okay, so let me put the first pre-ferment, the pat fermenté, which is an old bread dough from the day before. This is how the many, many bakers, they use only just pat fermenté, which is this old dough to start a new one. It, always keep a little bit of the first of this uh, the, the dough that you're doing to make bread and then you keep just a little bit like this and you use it all every day to proof or to ferment the next dough of the following day okay so we have the pat fermenté now we go with the sourdough take a look at these bubbles wow 
Beautiful. This is the power. <laughs> this is the engine of our dough. This is going to give a lot of flavor and lightness and crispiness and everything. Did I tell you that the baguette is one of, of my favorite kind of bread? I started baking because I wanted to have this incredible baguette. Yes, I started with that. Good. So, two preferments in, we still need one more. And here comes a Polish from Poland. Polish. Here it goes. Whoa. This is looking incredible. I know it's maybe a little bit complicated to think beforehand all this kind of preferments, but believe me, it's going to be really, really worth it. This, this dough is incredible. Takes some time, I know, but if you, but you make the day before and you organize yourself, it's not that complicated. You just need to think beforehand, organize, yes, a little bit, but it's really, really worth it. Okay, preferments done. And now I'll start the machine. We still need to add the water. So I'll add, I'll ask, I will start the machine at fast speed from the beginning, always at fast speed which is in maybe in this small one, like um, number three. Okay, and now comes the flour. I like to add all the ingredients slowly, not all at the same time, just making like a, like a rain, like a shower. Wow, <laughs> there. And now we need to start adding the water. Little by little, that, as I said before, this is called bassiness. So we start adding the water really slowly. Not all the water at the same time. Now goes in the yeast. There. We still have all this water left. The salt, the olive oil and the sugar. Now I can add the sugar. Like I said before, this is the food for the yeast. And a little bit more of water. The oven is about to call me in a few seconds, I think so. No? So let's check what is going on here. Good. Are you lost with all the sourdough bread recipes that you find on the internet? Would you like to learn all the tips and tricks to make your own sourdough bread at home, then I have the solution. I have designed the perfect masterclass of sourdough bread just made for you. By clicking the link on the description, you will learn how to make and take care of your sourdough starter, how to knead, shape, ferment, and bake your sourdough bread, how to use and read the baker's percentage, all the basic techniques to bake like a pro at home, and how to read and understand your dough. Don't miss out on it and click the link on the description right now. Yeah. So, let's add more water. There, we still have this little more. Good. Just add now a little bit more. Slowly, always go slowly. The gluten is developing perfectly. I like this kind of mixer with a, with this kind of pigtail or a spiral pigtail, which is the first one that I love is the one with arms. I don't know if you have those one, but then I prefer this one with a, with a pigtail. More water goes in. And still we have this left. The oven should be calling me in any second. And now this, and yes, we're about to run out of water. Everything went in. The final hydration of this dough 
is around 75, 78, 75, which it's not too, too hydrate, but it's the high hydration though. There, oh, great. So now goes the last drop of water. There you go. Done. And as soon as I see that the gluten development is done, we'll add the, the salt. This moment. Here comes the salt. Whoa, there. There goes the salt. Perfect. We still have the olive oil. Not yet, not yet. In a few seconds. I think we should go, yes. I think the oven is calling us. Let's check. No, one minute, one minute. Okay. What do I say? <laughs> Oven, I think, yes, we have one minute. Let's come back again. And let's check if the gluten development is okay. It's going to take to make a membrane. Have some water here so I can work on my hands. Now let's check this. Wow. This is what I'm looking for. Good. Take a look at this gluten development. Wow, really, really strong though. That's what we're looking for. So now that the gluten development is done, now we need, we need the dough to let it sit here for a few minutes and then we'll add the final ingredient, the olive oil. So now we'll, let the, we'll leave this here. Now let's go back to the oven to see if we take the baguettes out of it. 12 seconds. So let's make a sneak peek. Hey. <laughs> I love baguettes. Whoa, done. Really fast. Okay. What do you think about this? Oh, it's hot. Wow. Wow. Yes, we could leave them a few. Oh, this is really, really light out. Oh, and hot. <laughs> but I think it's okay now. What do you think? Yes? Okay. We'll take it out. Oh, let me take my peel. Yes, just a second. There. What? I'll do it like this. Wait. What? There it is. I'll do it again. I'll do it again. Like we have a clean shot. There. Wow. <laughs> no addition. No addition. Good. Beautiful baguette. And what do I do? Okay. I'll put them here. Seconds. There. Let me save this paper. And now we go with the rest. Wow. Beautiful. Then so light. Wow. Good. We will let them. Excellent. Wow. Oh. You have this one. Ta -da! Beautiful. Mm. Sounds hollow. And let me check this. Mm. Ha. It's really hot, but I love this. I love baking baguettes. And we had a really open spring. They really look really artisan. They are really artisan. Maybe in Fran France, they won't call this baguettes. It's my gluten Morgan style, but it's really, really light. So we let them cool down just a few minutes before we open them. And then we'll check the crown. So first, let's go back to the dough. We still need to add the olive oil. Okay, here's the dough. Let me check again. How's the gluten development there? Wow, take a look at this. Good. Take a look at this. <laughs> okay, so now it's time and it's not, it's not that sticky. It's a little bit sticky, but not that sticky. So now we go with the olive oil. Okay, let's 
Turn this thing on again and start. Olive oil goes in slowly. I prefer olive oil. In case you don't like olive oil, you could use canola oil or maybe um, the sunflower or corn oil. There. Done. Put this here. Wash my hands. And here's the container where we're going to put the dough. I mean, a few seconds. Yes, great. Goes on. I put some olive oil inside. Look at Mario. <laughs> and yes, we're done. The dough is already cooked in the pigtail. Here I go. Wow. Wow, can't believe it. All this amount of olive oil that we put inside. So, now we need to cut it. I'll take it, let me see. Oof, this pal is beautiful. Let's take it first piece. Wow. Yo, a little bit more. There. I'm here. Sign out. There. Let's see if I can do something in reverse. That. Last piece of dough. And that's all. Wow. And now, what I'm going to do is just a small stretching and folding, or folding and stretching. There, looking good. This way too. Look how elastic is this dough. Really, really elastic. That's because of the olive oil that we used. Almost done. I could do this forever. I'd never do this. Great. So the dough is done. And now to cover it, always cover the dough. Don't let it like this. Just cover, uncover because it's going to get dry. So now the dough is here. And we need this dough to rise. This dough is going to be, you could use it as I do always on the same day because we've been, we've been uh, pre fermenting this pre ferments from the day before from yesterday. So the final dough could be uh, shaped and baked today. If you want, you could also put this into cold fermentation and use it on the next day. Not, 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 not much more, just one day if you want, but you can make, you can shape the baguettes or bread. You can also make uh, country bread with this dough. It's not just only for baguettes. You can use it in a few hours now what we need to let the now what we need to do is to let this dough rise till it doubles in size and then we should shape it but since there's no addition in this video is there a third ah, addition no addition no addition yes we had no budget for addition so we what we what we i have i have already pre pre mixed or pre fermented one smaller dough in order for you to look how should it look like? Let me get it for you. I'll bring this also. And here is the final dough. Like this one, but I did it before I started this video. Here's the dough. This is one kilo and here I have three kilos. I'll take a look at all the bubbles I have here. It's the same dough, but three uh, around two hours the difference we have two hours of difference between this one and this one so i'll let this one for making baguettes later for me maybe i could make a sandwich <laughs> but now i'm going to 
work with this one so you can see how I ended up with the baguettes. So I'm going to unmold the dough here with some semolina or flour on the counter and take, take a look at all the air that we have here. Beautiful dough. It's a little bit complicated. You need to think and organize quite a few things before you start baking this, but the results are incredible. So in this kilo, I could get three baguettes. Those one that I've already took out of the oven weighed around 350 uh, grams. Here should weigh 333 grams each. I'm no, not going to weigh them now. I will just cut the dough into three pieces for you to see what I did. I try, try to arrange it first, so it's okay, almost the same. And I cut in three pieces. There, one, two, and three. Bah. By the eye, no? Like I always do. So, let me put some more flour around here in a second. And I'll move the dough so I can work. Okay. What we always do when we work with baguettes is two things. First, we need to pre-shape. Pre-shape is the first shape that we're going to, to give to the baguette, which, which is just folding it into itself to give it some tension, but we are not still going to stretch it because when we um, when we work with dough, the gluten, this gluten network is still a little bit tight. So we needed to relax uh, a little bit in order to stretch it like a baguette. So first, what we need to do is this um, pre-shape. So what we're going to do is this. Roll it into itself. Now it's starting to look like a baguette, but not yet a baguette. Okay, so... This is a pre-shape, the first shape that we do. It's done and we let it rest a few minutes here. There, pre-shaped. Now we go with the other one. I don't know if they weigh the <laughs> on the same. I think this, the third one is going to be smaller. So I'll do this again. I always do it this way. So doing the camera way, it's not <laughs> the best way and you can watch it but there take a look at all these bubbles those bubbles come from all the preferments that we've done so here comes a third one the second one sorry and now we go with this smaller one you always try to when you cut the dough try to make it kind of a recta rectangle the more the more rectangle it is the easier it's going to be so you rod it Again, and we're done. Yes, this one is a little bit smaller. Wow, <laughs> this is all artisan. More fl semolina or flour there. And now we need to let them rest a few seconds. Now what we are, what I'm going to do is to put this here and I'll bring the baguettes from there so we can start cutting them and then we'll stretch this on. Okay, come with me. Hello, how are you? Wow. Let's take a few of them. Woo! There. This one. This one. I feel like I'm in a bakery buying baguettes. Okay, give me two, give me three. This one. Which one? This one? This one? Or this one? This one. Four. It's okay, it's enough. Come with me. Whoa. Whoa. Here we are, and I'll put them in this cooling rack. There. So they're almost, they're almost ready to be open. And here we have the not yet finished baguettes. So first, I still need to make something. When we stretch the baguettes, You've seen that use uh, parchment paper, but if you don't want to use parchment pa paper and want to do the French way, I'll do. I'll use this linen cloth that I have from from my friend Richard Bertinet, which is one of the 
most well-known French uh, makers. He lives in England, that's strange, but he's French. And he makes excellent baguettes. If you don't know him, you should go and visit him. He lives in Bath, England. So, well, okay, this is the cloth. And now I put some semolina, or flour, if you don't have semolina. And I'm going to stretch the baguettes and put them here to rest. This is called in French, couche, which means like a, like a bed. It's like a bed for uh, bread, a bread bed. <laughs> okay, done. And now I need some space. Put this here. Now it's time to stretch the baguettes. So the baguette was pre-shaped and here I have it. So now what we have to do is just to finish the ends of the baguette because we have of the shape. Ah, no, sorry. <laughs> we still need to do something. Now that's what I'm going to do. Sorry. We'll Let's stretch it like this. Find shape. And now we're going to stretch it like this. Ding, 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 ding. Now we finish like this, giving it more tension. There. And now it looks like a baguette. <laughs> some, some more flour there. Now we have the shape. Now we need to finish the ends. So we do it like this, not too much pressure. Take a look at these bubbles. There. And now we finish the ends like this. And see how the dough let us stretch it really, really easy because it rested a little bit. So <clears throat> let me move this here so you can have a better look. And now I'll bring the, this here and I'll put the dough. I will make a little place for the next one. And we let it rest there for a few seconds. Now let's go with the second one. So we flip it over into the middle like this. The dough feels incredible. There, almost done. And then we give the final tension, bringing this side there and closing these sides here. Let me see if I can, can watch this better. This way it's going to be complicated, but this is the way to do it. There. Okay. This, here are all the stitches. Now some smolina, roll it a little bit. And now we give it the final shape. There, done. And put it here. Beautiful dough. All right, the best one. Yeah. More semolina. And let's do the final one. First, fold it into the center, to the middle, like this. Now we give the final dough, closing the dough and pressing here, like this. Oof, there's a lot of air going on there. Wow, beautiful. Have more flour, use it like this. The dough will pick the flour that she needs. Now I need to finish this ends. This one was a little bit smaller, but it's also beautiful. And we put it here. In the kush. So here are the three baguettes. And we let them rest for maybe half an hour, an hour. And then I score them and bake them, as you seen at the beginning of this video. That's all the dough, that's all the the procedure done fast because I had a uh, few preferments and dough done in, in beforehand. But that's how we do this kind of baguette, which is really, really airy and light. So I think it's time to try how did this bread came out of the oven. So what I need now is this board, nice. A gluten morgan knife. We'll open one of them, or maybe two. Wow, well, first of all, let's check this. Ooh. Ha, it's really airing. Light. Take a look at this. I can hold it with just two fingers. This means it's really, really easy. Wow, it smells incredible. 
Wow. This one, beautiful. <laughs> okay, let's open this one. Whoa. Fuck. Take a look at this drum. Wow. It smells amazing. Nice, <laughs> nice crumb. What do you think about nice open crumb? The thing when we, when you make a baguette, what you want is to have a really crispy, crispy uh, crust and thin. It shouldn't be thin and the dough and the crumb should be airy, creamy, very airy because what you, what you want to taste or what you want to bite in a baguette is the crust. The crust is the best part of the baguette. And the crumb is also important but should be really, really light. But we're looking for it for a crispy and thin crust. You need more crust and less crumb in a baguette. Let's open another one to see how it developed. This one, it is still hot. It's always recommended to wait a little bit more till you open the baguette. So this one, wow, beautiful too. Huh. Oh, there's still steam coming out of it. It's really hot. Wow. I love it. So now the best part, you should taste it. But I think I should do it out of program with it a little, a little butter. Yes, I know. Just a little butter. Wow. See? It's really cold, but the, the bread is hot. Let me melt this a little bit. Like this, but too much. Too much butter there. Now, oof. <laughs> Here I go, the best part of the video. I don't know. I don't know. Can we do everything again, all over again? <laughs> Excellent. I don't know. Crispy. The, the crumb is so moist, but so airy. Mm. But everything, the crust is everything. Oh. Mm. And as I said, the crust is all thin, crispy. That's what you're looking for. And the, the best part of the baguette is this one, when it comes right out of the oven. It's the best moment. The baguette, in France, they bake baguettes two or three times per day because they want always to have the crispy, crispier baguette that they can. So that's why they bake two or three times per day. So um, I think this is the best moment to test a real baguette. Then tomorrow it's going to be an excellent bread, but for toast, the to toast are incredible too, but this moment is the best. So well, I hope you have enjoyed this new video, a whole video, no addition to video, a real video of, of how I make this kind of bread. It's a little bit complicated using this pre-ferment, three different pre-ferments that I use for final dough. But as you can see, you get this incredible crumb, crust and taste. I hope you could taste that at home too, maybe. Um, just then send me a picture or leave me in comments how did it turn out at your house when you bake baguettes. If you don't have a deck oven like this, maybe you can make smaller baguettes and use a pizza stone if you have your oven here in the channel has a zillion videos about how to bake baguettes or even smaller but defi definitely you should try this one so i hope you have enjoyed that's all by the moment if you like like this video share it give me some comments and i'll see you on the next one i hope you have enjoyed this video and if you want to learn more about sourdough bread and sourdough starter i encourage you to check the link on the description and remember, this masterclass was specially designed for you.